Oh boy, this is a good one. Here's a story about a deal in motion, a deal that should have been done and could have been done and close to being done. The owner of the company made what I suppose the owner thought was a minor change to employee compensation, and that was not acceptable to the potential buyer. They were under the terms of an LOI. When the buyer and seller talked about the situation, their personalities began to get in the way, and I guess you could say there was a cultural class. I think you're going to enjoy this story, and it's going to underscore the importance of relationship. I'm Ted Leverett, broadcasting from PartnerOnCall.com. I'm the original business buyer advocate. For more than 30 years, I've been helping people find and buy the right businesses the right way, and then helping them grow their company using mergers and acquisitions. Along the way, I've interacted with and learned from some of the best deal makers worldwide. You're going to hear Kelvin Hughes of Peladin Capital Advisors talk to us about a deal gone bad. But it's not just bad. You'll see how we resuscitated the deal with another more acceptable buyer. So, Kel, what happened? So, the next one is a sell-side mandate, and our clients were wonderful people. Take quite a while to pull this one together. There was a lot of due diligence and preparation, which uh, is one of the hallmarks of Paladin. But we got it to market and we were out uh, working it and introducing it to some very uh, prospectively good buyers. And there was one in particular that stepped up that had a real passion to want to buy this business. And our client, the sellers, felt that, okay, it it may well be a a good person. He seems to be willing to pay the right price and let's go down the path. So they, they did select this particular buyer. They entered into a letter of intent, offered exclusivity so the buyer could do the extensive due diligence necessary, pull together the paperwork and whatever else uh, required to conclude the deal. We found over the about a two and a half month period, we were moving along fairly well. There were some back and forth tensions as there can always be as you negotiate through the nuances of the deal. But we found ourselves in about the middle of August, middle, late August in that particular year. And the owners, my clients, of course, uh, have to continue running the business and had to do what's necessary to keep the business operating successfully and soundly and so forth. And they took the liberty of giving one of the key staff members a $1 an hour raise, which was frankly quite nominal in the scheme of things. But they felt that person was very important and uh, they were overdue for a raise. And um, that was fine. They communicated that to the buyer. Uh, through uh, an email, and about uh, one or two hours later, the buyer got back with a text to the owners, berating them, swearing at them, and telling them how bad they were for making a change in the hourly rate to one of the key staff people in the company. And I've got to say, when the owners received that, they looked at it, and were rather dumbfounded. They were knocked back on their heels and didn't say a thing for a day or two. And after that period of time, they sat down with me and they said very, very professionally and kindly, they said, Calvin, we just can't conclude a deal with an individual that would treat us in this manner. And we cannot possibly allow them, that person, to treat our staff in any similar manner. And we just don't believe it's good for our company, for our staff, and we just don't feel good about selling. And they killed the deal right on the spot. Wow. Wow. To show you the magnitude of how good these people were, of course, they did compensate me. And they said, you know what? We're going to get back out there, take a little break. You've got to get your family on holidays. It was the end of August and kids were in school in those years. So we took about a two-week break and then I resumed and I got back on the deal in September. Now, this is a happy story because after getting out and working the deal, I was able to find another group that really was excited to buy it, was prepared to pay the price, was prepared to pay uh, to pay on good terms. And what makes it so fascinating is that the contrast in the character of the people that subsequently bought it and the culture that they would bring forth was the exact opposite of what we had found with the first buyer. And perhaps we hadn't investigated the character of the person or the culture, you you can't always tell. I mean, often you're dealing with very professional and reasonably nice people. 
But sometimes things come out that just tell you that uh, that, that combination is not going to work. With the one we did find, they were absolutely outstanding. And I would have to say that it was probably the easiest due diligence, formal paperwork, completion, and conclusion on the deal that I have ever experienced in 25 years of doing this. So what makes the story to me fascinating was just the extreme comparison or opposite type of people that bought it and the process and how it affected it. So it got done. Everybody was happy. Business went on to do extremely well. And the lesson we learned there is, you know, apart from all the numbers and the tax and the accounting and the figures and the business details, it often really does come down to the people that buy it, their ability to communicate and the culture that they bring together. So besides just the numbers, uh, culture is very important as a lesson learned. You know, one of the things that, that I tell the buyers I'm working with is it's all about the relationship. You're not going to get into a business worth buying with an owner if you can't get along with the owner. And if you begin with, with a situation where there's tension, personality tension, no matter how good the company looks, in those initial moments, you're going to be three or four months down the road and hoping to close this transaction. And if that relationship's not strong, you're not going to be able to withstand the normal speed bumps. So walking away makes a lot of sense. Sellers can find better buyers and buyers can find better sellers, right? Absolutely right. You have to have confidence that your business has value. And so long as you're not under some undue pressure, take the time necessary to get that great fit and great outcome. Well, that, you know, it's funny you say it that way, because a lot of the sellers of the businesses really do want to have a legacy. When they leave, they want to know that company is going to perform and that the employees are going to be happy and taken care of. Same with the customers. And if they sell to a buyer who doesn't have, let's say, their standard of care, well, they pretty much wreck their legacy. How can people get in touch with you? Well, they can certainly find me on LinkedIn. They just look up Paladin Capital Advisors and more particularly my name, Calvin Hughes. Hey, you. That's right, you. Have you been looking to buy an exciting and profitable business? Are you tired of searching? but only finding barriers that impede you from owning a wonderful business. Well, have we got some good news for you. You can find and buy the right business the right way. And you don't have to go it alone. For over 30 years, author and transaction advisor Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate, has been helping buyers worldwide achieve win-win done deals. Ted Leverett says, you can't buy it if you can't find it. You see, Buying a business is all about search, because if you can't find it, you can't buy it. It's about being best and first, first on the scene with sellers and being the seller's first choice and top of mind for brokers and sellers. And most importantly, avoiding buyer competition. What about having to compete with other buyers? Well, you have to outbid them, which is a good way to pay more than a business is worth. Searchers do better with a winning business buyer marketing plan. And that's where Ted Leverett comes in. He'll help you prepare a winning plan. And then he'll guide your actions so you can find and then buy the right business the right way. But searching is not enough. The reality is too many people buy the wrong business. Or they buy the right business, but on the wrong terms. That's why, if you want to buy the right business the right way, it makes sense to have Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate, on your advisory team. And one of the best ways to know what the savviest searchers and buyers do is to read Ted Leverett's books, How to Prepare Yourself and Find the Right Business to Buy, and How to Buy the Right Business the Right Way. You can get them at his website, partneroncall.com. Don't chance it. Right now, go to partneroncall.com. Get the books and schedule a free and private telephone conversation with Ted Leverett.